Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to do a full recap of Dark Season 2. Part of what I love about this show is its complexity, but I tried to keep this video on the shorter side. That meant that I had to leave out some of the smaller details which I love, so make sure to drop a comment if you have questions about something that I didn't get into in this recap. I plan on doing more Dark videos while we wait for Season 3, so hit the subscribe button if you're a fan of the show. Obviously this is a recap of everything that happened in Dark Season 2 and will be full of spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. The first episode of Dark's second season opens in a time period we haven't seen yet. There are two characters who at first glance aren't anyone we've seen before. The time period is 1921, and the characters who we see digging the passage in the caves are a younger Noah and who I presume to be an older Bartosz. We never get confirmation that this is Bartosz on screen, but I would be shocked to learn that's not the case. Noah kills the second man with a pickaxe after he accuses him of losing his faith in their group, Sigmundus. Before he's struck down, he tells Noah that he hopes that a day will come where he doesn't believe everything that Adam tells him. He says that he should ask him why he took him in and why he chose to call him Noah. Adam, whose face is covered with scar tissue, is the leader of Sigmundus. And the older Noah, who we met in season one, is also a member. We learn that they're looking for missing pages from the Triquetra notebook, and Adam says the apocalypse must come to pass. Younger Jonas wakes up from a dream of having sex with Marta in the future. Remember, he was sent there after touching young Helga through the wormhole that opened in the bunker in the season 1 finale. Season 2 takes place in June. Episode 1 is on the 21st, so it's just over 6 months removed from most of the events from season 1 which happened in November. Jonas has been stuck in 2053 for a while and he wants to travel back to stop the apocalypse on June 27th. We see him collecting materials and listening to tapes that Claudia made at some time before he arrived. An older Elizabeth Doppler is in an important role in the future. She guards the area around the nuclear plant called the Dead Zone and kills people who try to get inside. At this point we don't know why she's doing that other than we hear them say Sic Mundus Creatus Est during a hanging. But we do learn that Jonas is determined to enter the power plant and when he does he finds a mysterious floating blob inside. In 2020, we meet a new investigator named Clausen, who we later learn volunteered for the position of starting a task force with Charlotte. Six people have been missing for more than six months in Winden, and everyone is on edge. Stranger Jonas arrives at his childhood home right in time to interrupt Hannah, who's holding Boris Newald's gun to her throat. He reveals his identity to his mother and also tells her about her husband Michael's true identity as Michael Nielsen. Some other setup things that happen in the premiere, Alexander Tiedermann announces that the power plant will be closing, which means he has to hide the yellow barrels. He decides to bury them under concrete inside the plant so that no one will be able to find them. Bartosz and Marta break up and later we see him meet Noah and go inside the caves. In 1921, we see older Noah talking to his younger self, who's having a hard time after killing the man at the caves. Young Elizabeth finds a picture of Sigmundus in a book at H.G. Tannhaus's shop and identifies Noah to Peter. He tells Charlotte, and we see that they're working together, putting together clues in the bunker. In the second episode, old Claudia visits her younger self to tell her about time travel in Vinden and later gives her a map telling her where to find the time machine. She stresses that her younger self needs to stop Adam and plants the seeds that things could turn out differently with Regina and her father if she succeeds. Egon Tiedermann is now retired and has been diagnosed with cancer. He begins thinking about things and interviews Helga Doppler, who resides in a mental facility. He can't provide any useful information about Mad's disappearance the year before. Egon then decides to inquire about the man he arrested 34 years ago for the murders of Eric and Yasin and the disappearance of young Helga Doppler. It turns out Ulrich is still alive and has been confined to a psychiatric unit this whole time. He doesn't tell Egon anything useful but the interaction makes him suspect that he was wrong about what happened back in 1953. In 2020, Clausen and Charlotte visit Regina Tiedermann for an interview. Clausen seems to have an interest in Regina's husband, Alexander. Regina mentions that Stranger Yona stayed in her hotel during the disappearances, and she gives them a box filled with his belongings that he left behind. Charlotte notices pages from her grandfather's book, and she makes an excuse to leave. Elsewhere, Stranger Yona brings Hannah back to 1987 to show her Mikkel living with Inez. Hannah now 
understands that her husband Michael was a time traveler and the son of the man she was having an affair with. In 2053, Jonas gets caught by Elizabeth trying to re-enter the dead zone after gathering fuel he needed to make things work. He's about to be hanged, but Elizabeth saves him at the last minute, choosing to imprison him instead. Her translator, Celia, frees Jonas because she wants to know why Elizabeth let him live and what she's hiding. Jonas and Celia go back to the black blob inside the power plant, which we found out is known as the God Particle from one of Claudia's tapes. The episode ends as Jonas enters the stabilized God Particle, leaving Celia and 2053 behind. In episode 3, young Helga becomes the first successful traveler through a new and improved chair. Noah sends him back to 1954, where he returns home to everyone's surprise. Young Aegon tries to learn what happened from the boy, but he won't speak to anyone until older Noah comes to visit him later. Older Claudia meets with Agnes Nielsen in the bunker in 1954. We learn that Agnes and Noah are siblings and that she's on the outs with Sigmundus. Claudia gives her a newspaper clipping, which we'll see her take to Noah later in an effort to rejoin Sigmundus. We learn that it's a story about Claudia's death. Claudia goes to visit her father at the police station and then visits H.G. Tanhaus for one last time. She gets confronted by Noah, who tells her she's going to die. Before he shoots her, Claudia makes a comment about him being a pawn in a game he still doesn't know how to play. She says if you were free, you would have a choice, and then he kills her anyway. When Noah recovers the missing pages from the notebook, he's visibly shook. We hear him mention Charlotte's name, saying, no, this isn't right, this isn't true. In 1987, a lot of stuff happens. Ulrich tells Aegon who he is and that he's from the future when he goes back to visit him. Later, he brings a photo of Mikkel with him, and that sets Ulrich into a violent rage. Aegon also tells his daughter about his cancer. Middle Claudia visits Tannhaus for the first time with his book. He explains the bootstrap paradox, when something exists because it was sent back in time and therefore has no point of creation. He tells her, the book found me before I even wrote it. She then travels for the first time to 2020, where she looks in on Regina and sees that she's sick. In 1921, Adam asks Noah if he recovered the pages from the Triquetra notebook. He says that Claudia got what she deserved. In the end, we all get what we deserve. In episode 4, we find out where Jonas went after he entered the God Particle. He's in 1921, where he meets a younger Noah, who later takes him to meet Adam in his lair under the church. Adam reveals that he is the oldest version of Jonas, and I, for one, believe that. In 2020, adult Claudia is at the library doing research on what happened to her and her father. She learns that her father died and that she disappeared. She then goes back to 1987. In 2020, with three days to go until the apocalypse, things are starting to take shape. Marta, Franziska, Elizabeth, and Magnus start working together to figure out what's going on. And eventually, they run into Bartosz in the caves. They end up taking the time machine from him, not knowing what it is, and they leave him there overnight. Hannah and stranger Jonas talk to Charlotte, and after sharing what they know, decide to tell Katarina about it. At first, she thinks they're all crazy, but later goes to the school and finds Mikkel in the 1986 class photo. Clausen also interviews Alexander, learning that his last name was Kohler before he married Regina, but we don't know why this is important yet. In the fifth episode, Adam tells Jonas that he can change the future and the past if he prevents his father from killing himself. Adam shows Jonas his God Particle time machine under the church, which can operate outside the 33-year cycle and take you to any day you want to travel to. Jonas travels to the day before Michael committed suicide. In 1987, Ulrich breaks out of the psychiatric ward and finds Mikkel, but they get caught by the police before they can enter the caves. Claudia also learns about the yellow barrels from Bern Doppler, who asks her to keep things a secret at least until he dies. In 2020, Charlotte reveals to stranger Jonas that H.G. Tannhaus is not her real grandfather and that she never knew her parents. Later, Noah finds Charlotte and reveals that he is her father, but won't reveal who her mother is. The teens make Bartosz show them how the time machine works, and they take a brief trip to the 1980s. When they return, Marta finds the St. Christopher pendant that stranger Jonas left on her pillow. 
Episode six is the odd episode in this season that doesn't occur in the lead up to the apocalypse. Instead, we are in 2019, the day before Michael kills himself. Young Jonas arrives from 1921, which means we have two versions of the younger Jonas walking around. At the lake, the original one finds the St. Christopher pendant while he's sitting with Martha. They talk and almost kiss, but he leaves abruptly, telling her that he has to go teach his grandma how to use her new tablet. Traveling young Jonas then then pulls a switcheroo, because in his mind, he's going to talk his father out of committing suicide, which will mean he'll never exist. He tells Martha, you and I are perfect for each other. Never believe anything else. They share a kiss, which will lead to his slightly younger self getting laid later that evening. The Nielsens are throwing a party to celebrate Katarina and Ulrich's wedding anniversary. Young Jonas and Hannah go to the party, while the traveling young Jonas talks to his father. We learn that Michael hasn't been suicidal, and he reveals that it was Jonas who led him into the caves and took him to 1986. Older Claudia arrives and tells Jonas that Michael must kill himself so everything happens the same way it always has. Jonas is persuaded, and after a tearful goodbye, he leaves Michael to write his suicide letter. In episode 7, older Claudia's dead body is discovered in the woods in 1954. Egon thinks that she may have played a part in Helga's kidnapping. He asks the boy about her, but he only responds by calling Claudia the White Devil. After stealing the time machine from Stranger Jonas, Hannah arrives in this time period to visit Ulrich. After talking to him, she decides to leave him where he is. Later in Egon's office, she says that she's looking for a fresh start, indicating that she might stay in 1954 for a while. In 1987, it's the day of her father's death and Claudia is trying to prevent it. He tells her that he knows about time travel and she tries to play dumb at first. Things escalate to where he figures out that she knows and she gets angry. He tries to call the police to tell them what he knows and they get into a fight where she tries to take the phone from him. He falls, busting his head open on a table and she decides to let him bleed out, thinking that this has to happen so that he will later be saved. Before he dies, he says, you are the white devil. When she returns to her home, younger traveling Jonas arrives and tells her that they have to leave. He says he knows what she did, but says it doesn't have to happen that way again. When she asks where they're going, he says the future. Clausen confronts Alexander at the power plant, revealing that he had a brother named Alexander Kohler who went missing in 1986 and that he is not him. In the season two finale, Jonas explains to Claudia everything that her older self knew about time travel and the coming apocalypse. Jonas suggests that they probably can't change the big things using time travel, but perhaps they can change the details. He says, we can change a grain of sand and with that, the whole world. Charlotte learns that Alexander buried the radioactive waste and she's worried that Clausen's investigation will lead him to it. She heads over to the power plant to try to stop him. We learn that after finding out that Charlotte was his daughter, Noah decided that he had to kill Adam, and he sets out to do that. Adam isn't phased by this, saying it's not his destiny to die yet. Noah tries, but is unable to shoot him. And in the process, it's revealed that Noah's wife is an older Elizabeth, meaning Elizabeth is both Charlotte's daughter and her mother. As Adam is telling him that this knot can only be undone by destroying it completely, Agnes and the older Magnus and who we presume is the older Franziska enter the room. Agnes takes the gun from Noah and she's able to use it to kill him. Adult Jonas finds Marta and forces her to go into the bunker at gunpoint. He says he can't watch her die again and begs her to stay there. You might be thinking that this doesn't make sense because his younger self saw her die. And for me, this is one of those things that make Dark great. Even though he knows it probably won't work, he still feels compelled to try. Which is what I imagine all of us would do in that situation, even knowing full well that we were at the mercy of a deterministic universe. At the nuclear plant, Clausen gains access and pretty much goes straight to where the yellow barrels are buried. Young Jonas and Claudia go through the caves and activate the time machine, opening the portal back up. He explains that he's accepted that he needs to play a part in the disaster that he wants to prevent. Peter takes Elizabeth to the bunker to keep her safe, and when they open the door, Marta runs out to find Jonas. 
Claudia finds Regina and also brings her to the bunker. Young Jonas and Marta are reunited at his home where Adam shows up. Adam traveled to 2020 through the God Particle and he's there to kill Marta. He shoots her and explains that in order for him to exist, Jonas had to see her die and feel that pain. In 2053, we see Elizabeth go inside the dead zone and activate the God Particle at the same time that Clausen is having one of his police force use a jackhammer to break into the concrete that was poured over the yellow barrels. Charlotte gets there and tries to stop him, but he won't listen to her. He insists on opening it. At that same time, Elizabeth activates the God Particle in 2053. Older Magnus and his partner activate theirs in 1953. 21, and we watch as the contents inside the yellow barrel that Clausen opened becomes the God Particle. We watch as a portal opens up where Elizabeth in 2053 can see Charlotte in 2020. They go to touch each other and that's when the apocalypse hits Vinden. We know that several of the characters die because we saw their graves in 2053 when Jonas was there. He's still in his home at Marta's side, and before the explosion can reach it, he's saved by a version of Marta who tells him that she's from a different world. And that is where the season ends. So the original Marta dies, and we learn that there is one from a different world, however you want to describe it, who swoops in and she takes Jonas somewhere. We have to imagine it's wherever she came from. Claudia, Regina, Charlotte, and Peter, and also young Noah who showed up there, survive in the bunker. Stranger Jonas found Franziska, Magnus, and Bartage and took them somewhere before the explosion hit. It certainly makes sense that they'll end up in the 1921 timeline, but we don't know how many stops or what's going to happen between now and then. We don't know what happened to the older Elizabeth and Charlotte when they touched, where they ended up. So it's pretty exciting heading into season three. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments because I'm going to leave it there. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you're a fan of dark. I have more dark videos coming up and thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.